So, we are discussing about uh, link budget and then link margin and we concluded that uh, at least a value of 3 dB to 10 dB link margin should be maintained for any given receiver system. So, we will take one numerical example how to calculate a link budget and link margin. So, before that we will be using this formula simply. So, here P L uh, a function of R this P L it represents actually the path loss. So, here in the table free space path loss we are considering by L naught and in decibel scale we represented it by P L R. So, let us say we have a geostationary satellite link that operates over 35 to 36 gigahertz band with a transmit carrier power of 120 watt, transmit antenna gain given as 34 dB, IF bandwidth 20 megahertz, maximum distance 39000 kilometer. So, it is a geostationary satellite. So, typical separation 36 thousand kilometer, but it can change with time and here it is considered maximum value as 39000 kilometer. Then the receive antenna again it is given as 30 dB and has an effective temperature T e equal to 100 Kelvin. So, what is the uh, effective temperature we will discuss in next class after this. The required minimum signal to noise ratio S n R 10 dB, then we uh, have need to check now for a link margin at least 3 dB value is there or not. So, what are uh, the data given here? Operating frequency, if I go back to previous expression, transmitted power is given, gain of the antennas those are given, path loss we can calculate for that we need lambda and the distance, distance is already given 39000 kilometer. Now, lambda will be considering the mid band frequency that corresponds to mid band frequency. No data is given for the line loss. So, for now we will simply neglect these terms. Then if I consider at least 3 dB link margin, so minimum S n R required at the output of the receive antenna is 10 dB plus 3 dB, so 13 dB. Now, we will check what is the received power P R, is it at least 13 dB m? 13 dB uh, or not. So, we will start from uh, path loss calculation, this is 20 log 4 pi r by lambda, r is given as 39000 kilometer. So, it is 39 multiplied by 10 to the power 9 divided by lambda value 0 0.00845 meter. So, you can calculate what is the free space wavelength at 35.5 gigahertz, it would come 0 0.00845 meter. Now, path loss in decibel scale then it comes to 15.3 dB. We will convert all this data to decibel scale, it will be easier for calculation then it would become simply arithmetic addition and subtraction problem. So, transmitted power P t 120 watt this is equal to 50.8 d B m. So, d B m uh, it is with respect to milliwatt power how we uh, represent in d B m any power P it is first simply divided by 1 milliwatt and then we take the we convert it to decibel scale that is the unit then we call d B m. So, that means, for this 120 watt how we can calculate it? You simply divide 120 divided by 1 milli watt that means, 120 divided by 10 to the power minus 3. 
then you take 10 log of that value it would come 50.8 dBm. Then the received power this is the transmitted power. So, we are simply using this previous formula only thing is that we do not have any uh, value given for L t and L r and we are assuming them here as 0. So, if we put the values it is coming minus 100.5 dBm. We can also represent in terms of what again. So, just back to what value 8.91 into 10 to the power minus 14 watt. It is so small the received power. It is a satellite link 39,000 kilometer away. So, SNR at the output. So, for this SNR calculation uh, signal to noise ratio. So, signal power whatever we are receiving that is P r 8.91 into 10 to the power minus 14 and noise power it depends on the uh, effective temperature noise effective noise temperature T e of the receiver and the bandwidth of the receiver. So, this bandwidth we will discuss later again uh, this bandwidth is not simply the bandwidth of the channel. For now uh, we are considering bandwidth of the channel which is given as the I f bandwidth 20 megahertz. So, put the values here k is the Boltzmann constant which is 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23. So, if I put the values here it is coming 3.23 or if I convert it to decibel scale 10 log 10, it is coming 5.09 dB. What was the required SNR? 13 dB and what we are getting here? 5.09 dB. So, the receiver it cannot sense this incoming signal. Then what is the solution? At least this SNR we have to improve to 13 dB. So, only control where we have either we have to increase the transmit power or antenna gain. It can be transmit antenna, it can be receive antenna, but we have to increase the gain. And another interesting thing that noise it depends on temperature. So, we can cool down the receiver to decrease the noise component. So, these are the external control we have, we do not have any control over separation distance and I f bandwidth it depends on application. So, again we cannot uh, 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 we cannot decrease the I f bandwidth. So, we have to only play with them with the transmit antenna again, receive antenna again, transmit power and the receiver temperature. Next before starting the next part let us discuss uh, the digital modulation popular types of digital modulation. Digital modulation they are popular uh, because they have certain advantages over analog modulation and from millimeter wave perspective we will discuss uh, what are the effect we face with digital modulation. So, why we use digital modulation? what are the advantages over analog modulation? It is it has superior performance in presence of noise and fading. And not only that if I compare the total power required for any uh, transmission channel, it would have low power requirement compared to any analog channel. This power requirement it depends on modulation scheme we will see. Then error correction this is not only for digital modulation for any digital system we can uh, we can incorporate a way so that we can understand there is any error in receive bit chain or not. We can also encrypt our data which is not feasible in analog communications. So, because of this many advantages now digital modulation it uh, became very popular inside your mobile phone or even any in a handheld devices mostly we are using now digital modulation. And here are some typical 
digital modulation example. The first one is amplitude shift king or ASK, where simply when uh, any one state will represent when the signal is present and zero state we represent when there is no signal. So, we have a bit straight uh, here given by 1 0 1 0 0 1 and now we are modulating it and uh, representing it in ASK. The second one is frequency shift king. Here we use two different frequency components to represent 1 and 0. You can see 1 is being represented by a uh, lower value of frequency and the 0 component it is being represented by a higher frequency. And in PSK we call it phase shift king a change from 1 to 0 is represented by a change in phase. A conventional PSK it will change the phase by 180 degree. We may use uh, there are actually higher order phase shift king scheme like QPSK. In uh, QPSK or quadrature phase shift king we use four phase shift values 0, 90, 180, 270 degree. We may have also higher order uh, coding. Uh, higher, order, higher order modulation scheme using phase shift king. In addition to phase, we can also control their amplitude. In that case, we call it QAM or CAM signal. Now, let us see how the bit error rate it varies with the signal to noise ratio of any bit. So, bit error probability it depends on the ratio of received bit energy. Received bit energy is being represented by E b to noise power density in the channel which is N naught. So, E b which is bit energy it is then S into T b. So, S it is the received signal power this is for the carrier in general or we can uh, represent it in terms of bit rate, let us say R b is the bit rate, then E b is equal to simply S by R b, this is watt second unit. Then S n R E b by n naught, this is equal to S T b by n naught or we can also write down in terms of R b, S by n naught R b and this is let us say B is the bandwidth of the receiver, then uh, N naught this is equal to total noise power N divided by B. So, it can be also represented as S by capital N B into T B. Now, we see some uh, theoretical calculation comparison of bit error rate considering coherent demodulation the variation of bit error probability with E b by n naught in d b. So, for different modula digital modulation schemes. So, for A s k what we see for a given S n r value bit error probability is highest among these three or in other words we can say that for a specified bit error probability BPSK or QPSK would require lower SNR value EB by N naught. Here is a chart for different modulation schemes. The, uh, the minimum required EB by N naught value for given bit error probability of 10 to the power minus 5. So, we want at least a bit error probability of 10 to the power minus 5, then what is the minimum SNR we need to maintain for different types of modulation schemes. For binary ASK, it is 15.6 dB at least, binary FSK 12.6. So, binary PSK and QPSK, these two among all these, for them we need minimum SNR signal power. 
if we go for higher order modulation scheme again the required a b by n naught increases then why should we go for higher order modulation scheme because in that case the effective bandwidth or bandwidth efficiency we can say it can be increased let us take one numerical example so what we see before taking the numerical example from this graph that if signal to noise power decreases so noise power it depends on temperature and bandwidth if noise uh, so noise power more or less it will be constant now if signal power decreases then what will happen bit error probability it will increase error will be high so for a given uh, data rate we need to maintain some minimum snr for a given modulation scheme then so let's take now that example let's say an uav uses qpsk to communicate with its base station and base station is uh, r equal to 100 kilometer away so uav it's a flying object then what is the maximum data rate for a bit error probability of 10 to the power minus 5. So, 10 to the power minus 5 then what is the required E b by n naught we have to first see from the chart. So, E b by n naught if I go back in this table it is given minimum bit error as 10 to the power minus 5 minimum E b by n naught required is 9.6 dB. So, 9.6 dB if we convert it to simply ratio it is coming 9.12. Now, other data given that transmit power is 1 watt carrier frequency 77 gigahertz transmit antenna again 10 dB receive antenna again 30 dB and the system temperature 750 Kelvin. We also have some atmospheric loss 2 dB and required link margin is very high 10 dB. We start from path loss calculation, path loss this is 20 log 4 pi r by lambda. So, r this is given 100 kilometer and now lambda this is lambda naught at 77 gigahertz which comes 0 0.0039 meter. If we put the values here path loss is coming 170.2 dB. Now, we calculate the received power using previous formula. So, P t transmit power it is given 1 watt simply we have to convert it to dBm. G t it is already in dB given 10 dB, G r it is 30 dB path loss already we calculated 170.2 dB and L A this term represents atmospheric loss. So, since it is a loss of 2 dB we are subtracting it. So, putting all the values here receive power it is minus 102.2 dB m very small. Now, considering link margin equal to 10 dB. So, then uh, you see this is the received power then P r minimum specified for the receiver that P r mean value it would be 10 dB down from this value or 102.2 minus 10 it is coming in watt if I convert it to watt 6.03 into 10 to the power minus 15 then we calculate R b just use this relationship. Then R b this is E b by n naught to the power minus 1 into s mean by n naught. So, put the values here E b by n naught we calculated here 9.12. So, it is to the power minus 1. So, 1 by 9.12 and s mean we calculated 6.03 into 10 to the power minus 15 by 
1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 multi this is k into t. So, t system temperature is given 750 Kelvin. So, uh, do not mix with the physical temperature. So, actual physical temperature it might be different. So, this is we call the effective temperature, effective noise temperature or simply system temperature. We will discuss this topic later. So, it is 750 Kelvin. Then this figure as a whole it is coming 63.9 kbps. Even at 77 gigahertz for this given transmit power, if we need to maintain all this required link margin, let us say 10 dB, and uh, if we consider all these values, then maximum data rate you see it is just 63.9 kbps. So, it depends on received power in presence of noise. So, SNR it plays very significant role. If you want to improve data rate, then we have to increase SNR, we do not have any other option. Now, till now we have discussed about the general characteristics and we have some idea about now SNR and how any channel it performs uh, in presence of noise. We will take more examples and uh, the F we will discuss about the effect of noise in details. So, before that let us consider a special scenario, because now people are talking about uh, 5 G communication and it can be of course, at any millimeter wave frequencies, but let us consider a typical scenario for 60 gigahertz band applications, because if we go for pico cell it is much easier to design or use at uh, uh, at 60 gigahertz band, then we can uh, use that frequency reuse, we can utilize that frequency reuse between different cells. So, what are the advantages of 60 gigahertz band? First of all, throughout world it is unlicensed band 57 to 63, 64 almost 7 gigahertz, this is unlicensed band and highly secure operation is possible, because of that high atmospheric loss due to oxygen absorption. Why highly secure? Because whatever I am transmitting, I know it cannot go beyond a few kilometer. So, a few after a few kilometer nobody can listen to me. Not only that, if I use a highly directive beam, that means, if the gain of my transmit antenna is very high. So, any persons outside that they cannot listen to me, because it is uh, whatever uh, power available outside the main beam it is very less and it is further being uh, attenuated by atmosphere. So, we can say highly secure operation is possible, then high level of frequency reuse capability, we can decrease the size of pico cell and we can utilize this same frequency band over and over, can support fiber optic data transmission speed whole 7 gigahertz is available. So, very we can utilize almost whole of this band. So, sometimes that is why it is called 5 nines channel. So, you might have uh, you might know the 2G spectrum distribution, 3G spectrum distribution. So, for each and every company the spectrum available it is very much limited, but if we go for 60 gigahertz appli band application, which uh, you see it is unlicensed band, you can utilize the whole band and you will not disturb any other person who is a few kilometer away from you. So, you can utilize this whole channel 7 gigahertz channel is yours. So, that is why sometimes it is called uh, 5 nines channel 5 nines uh, usability. Then to some extent we can call mature technology, because now uh, most of the components are available in market and uh, day by day uh, the cost becoming cheaper, but also we face some other problems. 
So, let us discuss about those problems. First problem we will be facing is free space path loss, which is 20 log 10 4 pi r by lambda. So, r is the free space distance and lambda is the wavelength. Now, you see I am uh, giving you some calculated values for this free space path loss for r equal to 10 meter. At r equal to 10 meter, if I calculate this path loss for 2.4 gigahertz channel, it is coming 60 dB. If I almost double the frequency to 5 gigahertz, so we have 6 dB more attenuation. Now, if we go for 60 gigahertz application, path loss is 88 dB. In this expression, we did not consider the absorption due to oxygen uh, molecule. No atmospheric attenuation is here. Just because of uh, the lambda value, the smaller lambda value, this path loss is increased from 60 dB to 88 dB, 28 dB higher. So, obviously, for a same signal power at the same distance, if I compare the performance of a 2.4 gigahertz channel with that at 60 gigahertz channel, what we expect SNR will be much poor at 60 gigahertz. So, this is a problem for 60 gigahertz applications. We have some other problem and we will take some numerical values. Then considering this 28 dB extra attenuation due to path loss, can really any channel or any communication feasible at 60 gigahertz or not? We will see after a break. Thank you.